Yo, 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 what's going on? Um, it is your boy, Coach Jay, here. Um, game time tennis in the building. Um, if you have not, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to try to give you as much, as much, as much information as I can um, for your tennis needs, for your tournament starting, and everything in between. Uh, again, if you have not, please like and subscribe. Um, my IG is Game Time Tennis now. Um, and again, my Facebook is Game Time Tennis. So follow me on there. Got some content coming up um, fairly soon. The tennis community has been uh, decently quiet. Um, there has been a change in the number one player in the world, and that is Daniel Medvedev. And if I say it once, I'll say it again. Um, he has shocked the game. He is taking his game style um, and found a plan to to really produce and grow inside of that game style and make it really tough on opponents. So, with that being said, if you check out the title right here, you will see when should I string restring my racket. Okay, you should string it if it doesn't have string in it. So let's just start there. But to restring, let's say you have string in it. Um, one of the most common um, things that you'll hear um, is, is it dead or it's dead? What do they mean by it's dead? Now, um, never known string to be alive. So let's, let's put that disclaimer out there. Um, when they make strings that are alive and talk to you, then there's a problem. Um, but Ultimately, when strings are dead, um, they are not performing in the manner that they should. Basically meaning you're hitting a ball and there is no effect at all. And I mean, when I say no effect, like you could just put the strings in yourself by hand and it wouldn't give a movement kind of thing. It would, um, it would basically be like, uh, it's not playing where the ball is going too deep or it's really controlled. It's just like a dead trampoline. The springs are gone. It's like, bloop, that's it. That's dead string. Um, strings have different properties. You're, they, there's spin, there's control, there's power. Um, then there's shapes and everything in between. There's square. There's your sharper edge strings. Um, there's poly, synthetics, copolys, and we can play into that all later on. But when your string, from the time that you originally got it, and it was freshly strung, to now, it does not play the same. It is extremely um, uncomfortable, and it feels like you're working too hard. It's probably time to get your racket strung, okay? Um, and that's what they mean by dead strings. They've been in there so long, they don't do what they're supposed to do anymore. Okay, second, um, you start seeing your ball flying way too long. Um, it could be that the tension is now dropped so much that a lower tension creates a bigger spring or a more trampoline effect on the strings and the racket itself. And so your ball is flying long and you don't have enough control. If you started to have control and now the balls are flying way too long, and you haven't really changed much or anything in your stroke, it's probably time to go and get it restrung um, to place that tension a lot higher. Now, I've heard several people say, well, my string isn't broken, so you can just put it on the machine and like, like tighten it up without taking the string out. It doesn't work like that. If you need a restring, you have to cut out what you have and add new string. Okay, I have seen some guys say, oh, well, only this one string is broken. Can you repair this one string? No. No, because what's happened is once that string breaks, the tension starts to loosen in the rest of the racket. Okay, so, and there's no way to just retighten that string um, effectively. And it's probably a lot easier to just get it restrung instead of trying to take one out, like clamp it and take one out. Trying to figure out, okay, how fast did it break? Did it break like 10 minutes ago? Maybe I can save some of this tension. Just restring the racket. Don't don't be extra. Don't try to take the cheap way out. Um, 
restring your racket. Now, uh, we'll go into a little bit more of, of stringing and prices and things like that, things to kind of look out for when you are getting your racket restrung, but we'll touch it at the end. Now, um, there's no power um, or way too much control. Um, maybe it's too tight or it's the wrong string or tension for you. And what I mean by no power is um, sometimes when you get a freshly strung racket, the string tension, um, usually in pounds, unless you're doing racquetball, uh, or excuse me, unless you're doing like a badminton or something like that, or unless you got somebody from um, overseas coming here, they may string in kilos. Um, but usually that tension, um, the higher the tension on the racket, the more control. Usually there's a meter. Um, some rackets range from 50 to 60 pounds um, recommended. Some range from 48 to 58 or 48 to like 65. I've seen some crazy stuff like that, especially when it's some oversized rackets. Um, but the higher you go in tension, the more control you can pretty much expect and the less power. If you can generate your own power, you need more control, you need to go higher in tension. If you feel like you need a little bit of both, try sticking in the middle. I honestly like to go one pound. If you feel like you need both, I like to go one pound over the center because I expect a loss in tension after a couple of times of playing and it'll be perfect where you are. Um, and then wrong string. Let's say you're playing and your racket was fine, but the string's been in there for years or you stopped playing for a while. You need to get it restrung to get it fresh. Um, a lot of stringers and, and don't, don't say, don't take this the wrong way, <clears throat> but a lot of stringers will go in and, um, try to put this overly aggressive string into a style of player that doesn't need an overly aggressive string. Let me give you an example. If I have a client that's. 58, 60 years old, um, and they play recreationally, and they're like a 3-0, 3-5 level player, maybe even maybe even a 4-0, but they're not playing with a lot of top spin. Why would I put Hyper G in their racket? Hyper G is a string, a poly string that's a little bit tougher, and it's meant to provide more spin. If they're not looking to add spin to their game and they're just fine with what they have, why put a spin string in there? Unless they're hitting the ball long, you can put a, a solid, like, something simple like a head velocity in a racket. Um, you want a little bit more of a wax coating. Um, X1 by face. You can jump throw that in there. Technofiber X1 by face. Um, there, are, there's so many different strings out there that you can put in a racket that are not super abrasive. I've seen guys come in and they're like, "Hey man, I had this racket and I've always loved it. I got it restrung, and it just doesn't feel the same." And I'm like, "Well, let me see what they put in here." And they put an RPM blast. And I'm like, "Yeah, my arm is a little bit." sore like I've never had that problem and it's like okay well, we definitely gotta get you a softer string um, you can still find a durable soft solid string that still does the job um, but I think a lot of um, a lot of inexperienced strings I won't even say younger strings there's some great young stringers but a lot of inexperienced strings just put whatever is the popular in a player's racket and not what benefits the player okay don't do that Make sure that the stringer that you go to is very experienced. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's putting in, um, how to blend. If he's doing a um, hybrid, how to blend the certain strings together to give you that certain effect. Um, as a disclaimer for stringers, um, I like stringers who like <clears throat> to try out different strings. For me, if I get a sample package of strings from uh, any company I usually like to try like two or three of that same string in different variations of rackets 
I want to know what it feels like in a super controlled rack and maybe like a pure strike. Um, maybe like a 100 square inch head like the Pure Drive or the um, Wilson Ultra. Um, and so I, I want to try it out in different variations. If I try it in two 16 by 19 patterns, I want to try it in an 18 by 20 pattern because I need to know what it feels like then. Um, then I can gauge, okay, if I dropped a little bit, I probably would get a little bit more power. If I upped it a little bit, it'd be way too much control or whatever the case may be. Um, find a stringer who knows about different styles of strings and at least somebody who's tried some different styles of strings. Um, and then lastly, um, know what you need for your game. <laughs> Man, I'm sorry. I, I had to take a, a quick second, but you gotta know what you need for your game. Um, I have plenty of customers, and I love these customers, but I like to give them that information right up front. Look, if you don't know what you need for your racket, let's go figure out what kind of game you have. Real quick, these are questions that you can always ask yourself, or your stringer should probably ask if. You're just saying, yeah, I don't know what I want in my racket. Question one, um, do you need more power or control or spin? Some people will say, I need a combination of all three. Okay, do you play with much spin? Is Which one is more important right now? Okay, more power or more control? Let's start there. Okay, whatever the case may be, they say power or control, Okay, now you know which range of strings to look at. The second thing is, know what racket that player is playing with. For example, if I have a controlled centered racket with a close string pattern, a let's say an 18 by 20, okay, the racket itself will give you control based off of the string pattern, okay? So whatever you string it with, a additional control string probably won't help that. Now you need to give them the balance because too much control and now they're fighting to get the ball over. So now you pair that combination of the racket of the style of racket, a control centered or a power centered racket um, or heck even an all around racket with what they can, what they can get with the string to give them the perfect combination. Not just, oh, you're in high school, so you need to play with Hyper G. Or you're in high school, you need to play with Alu Power. Um, or you're in high school, we're all going to play with RPM Blast. RPM Blast does not fit everybody. Selenko Hyper G does not fit everybody. Tour Bite does not fit everybody. Alu Power doesn't fit everybody. Element is sometimes too soft for some people. You have to understand what type of string you're dealing with and what type of racket you're dealing with and find the perfect pair for that player's game. I need a little bit more of this. So I got a control racket. So we got the control factor situated. But I need a little bit more power. And I've had some issues with my elbow. So now you need a soft string that's going to give a little bit more power. Not really playing with a lot of spin. Why not throw a head velocity in there? Maybe right in the center or a pound less than what the center mark of what, what is recommended for the racket. There you go. You got a control center racket, da da da. I like to tell my customers, look, I give you um I give you, you know, three or four days. Let it sit in there, play with it, let me know what it works. Because then I can go back and say, this is what style of game this person is playing with. Let's go get them the perfect string. Um, it's really, 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 really tough when stringers, one, haven't played the game, um, but two, haven't even tested any rackets um, in different string combinations. Uh, some people just go by what people say that they like. But if you have a variety of players, and a variety of styles of tennis, you could be all over the place. 
Um, I think this is what has continued to help me grow as a tennis stringer, but more importantly, to help other people know when it's time to restring um, and what steps they need to take to get their rackets restrung. Last thing, um, keep a record of what you're getting strung. Um, for example, if you are stringing a racket for a customer, make sure you have a database. If nothing else, make sure you tag the racket to say the racket was strung this date to give you a range of saying, okay, they've been out for a year. They probably need their rackets restrung. Or they've been out for six months, but they've been playing every day. They probably need their racket restrung. Um, and so my tags, uh, I wish I had my, my tag in here. But my tags literally just say um, the date, the tension, the string, and then I always leave information for them to contact me um, just in case they have any, 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 any problems. Uh, my customers can literally book an appointment online, bam, and have it here. So with that being said, see y'all later. Know when you need to get your record strong and follow Game Time Tennis on both IG and Facebook. And I will see you later.